Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So I was asked recently if I could do a post um, about my favorite colors for landscape sketching. And I know I've talked a little bit about the colors in my standard watercolor palette before. So this is my sketching palette. Uh, I have another one here. You know, these look pretty similar, <laughs> pretty similar color choices here. And it got me thinking, do I have any favorite colors generally or just for landscape sketching? And um, yeah, I investigated my own habits a little bit. And just before we get started, I wanted to show what uh, I mean by landscape sketching, because I know this is different for every artist. And so this is what I usually... Uh, so this is what I'm talking about when I mean landscape sketches. So mine are um, preferably rather small. So these um, are sort of these thumbnails that are maybe um, not even half a page in my sketchbook. And uh, I typically, these will take between 20 and 30 minutes or sometimes not even that long. So this took a little bit longer. There's a bit more detail, but uh, some of these are really just these quick explorations of light and atmosphere and this is how i like to do landscapes i'm i'm not a big fan of um, painting for hours on one landscape i rather like to have a look around and do different compositions um, here are a few more just so that you can get an uh, impression of um, what i mean by landscape sketching and yeah i'm I'm, I'm a bit hesitant to say this, but my favorite colors for landscape sketching and generally for sketching are probably very, very boring because there are really classic cho color choices that a lot of landscape painters make when they put together their watercolor palette. And um, yeah, for example, I like and frequently use the standard colors like ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, you will find uh, similar colors on this palette. And for me, these are really great versatile pigments. Uh, let's take another look on my paintings here. So cerulean blue is great for these kind of skies that you can just brush on and then get a little bit of granulation depending on your paper. And then you have a sky, so you don't need to fiddle a lot. Ultramarine blue is great for mixing uh, cool tones into greens. Uh, I use this here all of the time. Uh, I also use it here to have just a little bit of this cooler blue in the back here. And it's also great for mixing these kind of neutrals. So here in the ground or here in the background, I've mixed it with burnt sienna so that I can get this neutral, uh, almost gray tone. And depending on how you mix it, uh, you will get more bluish or a more brownish uh, tone overall. Or I should say hue because it's uh, when we're talking about colors, it's a hue. Um, yeah, ultramarine is great for, for mixing with these earth tones. So yellow ochre or burnt sienna, they, these are featured in almost every palette that you'll come across. And this is just because, you know, they are really great for mixing. They represent a lot of nature's colors. And uh, so yellow ochre, for example, or raw sienna, depending uh, on what you uh, can get. This is this warm earth tone. And you can get, use this for all kinds of things, for um, dry grasses, for dry leaves, uh, for fields, for mixing into other um, colors like greens to make them a little bit warmer. And um, then you have this burnt sienna, which is more of a red earth tone. Uh, alternatives for this would be English red or Venetian red, or uh, even this, um, this darker brown, which is called burnt amber. And this will add a an, an really natural red or an earthy red color that can be mixed to really strong darks with a blue, like I showed here, or uh, yeah, just on its own for these kind of um, natural bark colors. So let me show you uh, a few of these colors. Let, let, let's do a small demo. Uh, yeah, as I said, I mainly use cerulean blue for my skies. And this is also because the sky uh, here where I live is um, so basically, it, it looks like the cerulean blue. So this is a very 
wonderfully soft granulating color. You can spread it around. If you add a bit more, you will see the granulation come through. And so uh, basically it matches the sky where I live here quite often. So basically I can get away with just uh, dotting a little bit of color onto my page and then I have a great sky. And depending on where you, you live, you might want to use another blue as, you, as your go-to sky blue. So there's also cobalt blue or um, yeah, you could also use ultramarine or maybe even a turquoise blue um, or some mixes of that. Another color that I have found that I frequently use uh, to mix and to tone down other colors and to render them a bit darker and more natural is sepia. So you can see this is a very cool dark brown, almost a black, but not quite. It has some black pigment in it. So this is why I would say don't throw it into everything that you mix because then you're... Um, your picture may just end up uh, a bit dead. So for mixing darks, uh, I would say try to use this combination of um, burnt sienna and ultramarine. Wait, I can show you this too, actually. Let's just mix up a little bit of this. So you can see how dark you can do your mixes with this kind of And you can really vary uh, what kind of color you get from this. So this is really great for these sort of natural looking um, transitions between colors too. And sometimes, you know, I just reach for this sepia. It's also great for... Um, and maybe... I tend to have more colors in my palette because I tend to reach for these colors that I don't have to mix every time. So if I need a very um, constant color that's always the same because maybe I'm painting, um, maybe not a landscape, but maybe a bird that has this very constant combination of colors, then I will reach for colors like this sepia. And another color that I sometimes like to use for shadows is dioxazine violet. So this is a very intense violet. <coughs> Doesn't look like an, a color from nature at all. And it has to be used with care because it's very intense. But it's a great shortcut for cooler and shadowy areas. So um, again, if you mix it with burnt sienna, you get really interesting earthy violets or if you mix it with a bit of sepia then it will become even darker and so this is the sort of shadow that I really enjoy so this dark kind of violet uh, if you have if you don't have dioxazine violet, you can try other violets like uh, cobalt violet or manganese violet, which are a bit different. They're, they have other hues. Uh, you could also try mixing a dark red like this uh, permanent alizarin crimson with um, ultramarine blue. It, it will look a bit differently, but you can get so a sort of a violet from it. Another uh, color choice that I find useful and that I maybe use just a little bit too much is this spring green or may green it is called Baha'i Schminke. Um, let me show you. It's quite intense, it's, but I think it's a beautiful warm green. So if you mix in just a little bit of um, yellow ochre, for example, you can get a very natural and bright looking green. So this kind of, so this is convenience green. Uh, it's uh, similar colors are available from, um, in different names from other manufacturers, uh, sometimes as Taylo green yellow or permanent green light. And these will vary a bit. So this is a very warm version and a very intense version. Um, let's look at this Holbein palette. I have a similar color over here. It's called leaf green. It's also a mix of two pigments. And 
as you can see, it's even more yellow, so it's even a bit more intense, but I kind of like it. <laughs> uh, another beautiful green pigment, or almost yellowish pigment, that I enjoy a lot, but I don't use it very often because it's really, it can be really overpowering, is this uh, green gold. This is by Windsor and Newton. It's also available from other manufacturers. I'll just show you too many palettes to put down here. <laughs> so this is even more yellow. And if you mix it into any other color, it will add this sort of beautiful glow to everything that you mix it with. So I've just picked up a little bit of sap green. And the, the yellow part in this pigment will sort of add this glow to everything you use it with. It's very nice to use, but it can also be a, a bit overpowering in paintings. That's why I don't use it all of the time. Yeah, and speaking about this and looking at some of these favorites that I mentioned, I realize I may have to switch some colors on my palette for a change. So these sort of go-to colors and shortcuts can um, be very useful, but they can also produce routines. And it's a good choice to revisit and change up routines from time to time to keep your sketching interesting. Uh, I'm very happy with this small palette that I usually use. But maybe I'll assemble a smaller kit with colors that I don't use as frequently. Um, and whenever I use this palette, which has a few more uh, paints on it, a few more colors, I notice that uh, there are certain blues that I almost never use, like this royal blue, which is, I think, an indenthrine blue. And uh, th this makes me wonder, or the Prussian blue, I almost never use Prussian blue, it's just not my standard blue, I don't even like the color that much. But I know many artists use it and uh, with great success, and so maybe I should investigate and try out a few mixes with it. Um, yeah, so maybe I should assemble a small kit with these unloved colors from my other palettes that I don't use as frequently, and just to see what I can get out of them. And I think experiments like this and trying out different mixes keep uh, sketching fresh and interesting. And so this is not just for landscape sketching, but for all kinds of subjects. So naturally, now I would like to know from you, what are your preferred colors for landscape sketching? What are your favorite mixes? Um, yeah, what kind of colors would you like to try out or what have you tried and... Um, removed from your palette again. I would really like to, to hear from you. Maybe you can leave me a comment on the, vi the video. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was somehow useful for you. And um, I'll see you again very soon. Bye.